In the realm of the divine, atop the majestic Mount Olympus reigned Zeus, the supreme ruler of the gods. His authority was unchallenged, his power symbolized by the thunderbolt and the eagle, omens that spoke directly to the hearts of mortals. Zeus, in his infinite might, commanded the skies, crafting the weather to reflect his boundless emotions, from the gentlest rains to the most furious storms. To the ancient Greeks, Zeus wasn't just the greatest of the deities. He was the pivotal figure who rewarded the faithful and unleashed vengeance upon those who dared to question his supremacy. Having secured his dominion over the cosmos, Zeus's next venture was to find a queen, a consort worthy to sit beside him on the celestial throne. Yet the king of gods was notorious for his wandering heart, marrying no fewer than seven goddesses throughout his reign. His first bride, the nymph Metis, goddess of wisdom, soon bore him a child. But a prophecy from Zeus's own grandparents, Gaia and Uranus, foretold that this child would one day usurp his throne. In a bid to escape fate, Zeus consumed Metis whole, only to later be plagued by an unbearable headache. In a moment of agony, he commanded that his skull be cleaved open from which sprang Athena, goddess of war and wisdom, fully armored and ready to join the ranks of the Olympians. Zeus's second marriage was to his aunt Themis, the titaness of justice and order, who had sided with the Olympian gods during their conflict with the Titans. Their union brought forth three powerful children, known as the Three Fates. These divine sisters wielded profound influence over mortal life, weaving the thread of destiny that determined the journey of every soul. Clotho, the spinner, initiated the life of each being. Lachesis, the allotter, determined their fate, and Atropos, the inflexible, ended their lives with her shears when their time had come. Despite numerous marriages and countless offspring, Zeus's heart finally settled on Hera, his older sister and the goddess of marriage and childbirth, who became his final and most enduring wife. However, Zeus's eyes still wandered, and his escapades continued, most notably with Europa, a mortal princess. To win her, Zeus transformed into a majestic white bull, whisking her away to Crete upon her back. Their descendants would shape the very fabric of Greek mythology, with Minos, the legendary king of Crete, among them. To honor Europa, Zeus named the continent after her and immortalized their love in the stars as the constellation Taurus, Hera, the queen of the gods, protector of marriage and women, and perhaps one of the most complex figures atop Mount Olympus. In the heart of Greek society, Hera was a figure of immense respect and reverence. Yet, beneath the surface of her divine protection and maternal grace, simmered a tempest of vengeance and spite. Hera's marriage to Zeus, the king of the gods, was a union of power and prestige. However, it was far from harmonious, given Zeus's infamous infidelities. Each of Zeus's affairs was a blow to Hera, igniting her wrath and setting the stage for tales of divine retribution that have captivated audiences for millennia. Among the Olympians, Ares and Hephaestus were the only children Hera bore with Zeus. Starkly contrasted by the myriad of gods and mortals, born from Zeus's numerous liaisons. One of the most notable of these affairs was with Io, a princess and devoted priestess of Hera herself. The irony of Zeus's infidelity with one of Hera's own priestesses added insult to injury, sparking a chain of events that showcased Hera's cunning and merciless pursuit of vengeance. Zeus's attempt to hide his affair by transforming Io into a beautiful white cow was an act of desperation one that Hera saw through with ease, claiming the cow as a gift and imprisoning Io under the watchful eyes of Argus, the hundred-eyed monster. Hera's punishment for Io was both cruel and inventive. Yet, Zeus's intervention through Hermes, who lulled Argus to sleep with music and song before slaying him, speaks to the lengths the gods would go to protect their own. Hera's response to Io's escape, sending a gadfly to torment her, and Io's subsequent wandering that led to the naming of the Ionian Sea, are tales of endurance, suffering, and ultimately, resilience. Io's eventual restoration to human form by Zeus and her lineage that includes heroes such as Perseus and Heracles underscores the intertwined fates of gods and mortals and the lasting impact of their encounters. Leto's tale, another victim of Hera's jealousy, further illustrates the queen's unforgiving nature. Pregnant with twins by Zeus, Leto faced Hera's wrath as she fled across Greece, seeking refuge to give birth. 
The island of Delos's willingness to shelter Leto, and the eventual birth of Apollo and Artemis, reveal the complexities of divine intervention and the power of compassion amidst divine vendettas. Niobe's story, marked by her arrogance and tragic loss at the hands of Apollo and Artemis, serves as a somber reminder of the consequences of mortal hubris in the face of the divine. Transformed into a stone, by Zeus as a merciful end to her suffering, we shine the spotlight on Apollo, the divine archetype of beauty and brilliance, revered as the god of archery, light, music, and prophecy. Embark with us as we trace the footsteps of Apollo, the luminous deity, born under the shadow of his mother's trials. His birth was not just a beginning, but a declaration of the extraordinary feats to come. Apollo's story takes us to the sacred slopes of Meet Parnassus, a place where Earth meets the divine, and where his destiny to confront the great serpent Python unfolds. This beast, having terrorized his mother, met its end in a shower of arrows from Apollo's golden bow, a testament to his unmatched skill and courage. In the very spot where Python fell, Apollo erected a magnificent temple, a monument to victory and divine will. This temple would house the Oracle of Delphi, a sanctuary of wisdom that drew seekers from all corners of the known world, yearning for the insights of the Pythia, the Oracle herself. The Pythia channeling Apollo's spirit was an enigmatic figure, veiled in mystery and the intoxicating vapors that rose from the earth. In her frenzied state, she delivered prophecies that guided empires and shaped the destinies of all who came to her. Her cryptic words, often shrouded in riddles, required interpretation by the wise, for Apollo's messages were not always clear to the uninitiated. Now let's talk about Apollo, the cocky archer who took down Python, a serpent with more lives than a cat. After his victory, he's strutting around, declaring himself the ultimate bowman. But then enter Eros, the mischievous god of love with his own little bow. Apollo laughs in his face, saying he's not even worthy of wielding such a weapon. Big mistake, Apollo. Eros, feeling all salty, decides to teach Apollo a lesson. He shoots Apollo with a golden arrow, making him fall head over heels for this chick named Daphne. But hold up. He also shoots Daphne with a lead-tipped arrow, making her repulsed by Apollo's advances. Classic love triangle drama, am I right? So Apollo's all smitten, chasing after Daphne like a lovesick puppy. But she's not having it. She calls out to Daddy River God for help, and next thing you know, she's sprouting leaves and bark, turning into the very first laurel tree Apollo devastated but still holding a torch for her, decides to immortalize her by making the laurel tree's leaves evergreen. Now let's shift gears to Apollo's son Asclepius, the OG doctor who could literally bring people back from the dead. But messing with life and death wasn't cool with Hades, so Zeus zaps him with a thunderbolt. But hey, thanks to Daddy Apollo's plea, Zeus brings him back and Asclepius becomes the god of healing and medicine. Talk about a comeback story. Last but not least, we've got Artemis, Apollo's fierce twin sis. She's all about hunting, keeping nature in balance, and protecting her purity. When poor Acteon accidentally stumbles upon her during bath time, she doesn't mess around. She turns him into a deer and lets loose her pack of hunting dogs. Ouch, talk about a rough way to go. And there you have it, folks, the wild and wonderful world of Apollo, Artemis, and the gang. Which myth do you find most fascinating? Let me know down in the comments, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more epic tales from ancient times. Until next time, stay legendary.